Hello, this is Neil Paddock from How to Program Drums, and today I'm going to show you how to use a MIDI file in Reason, and we're just going to play around with MIDI files in general. Um, I've decided to pick on one of my son's tracks, which is called Terabyte. So here it is, and if I right click on it and say open with Cakewalk Express, it's going to fire it up in Cakewalk Express, which is an old program, probably about 15 years old now. Um, James and I use it a lot. It was a freebie with a computer I bought many years ago. Um, but this is James's weapon of choice for mini composition. Anyway, let's press play and see what we get. Okay, so hopefully you get an idea of what this track is about now. And what I'd like to do is just show you how to import this track into Reason and what happens when we do. So let's um, minimize our Cakewalk Express. Let's pull across a copy of Reason. And now I go to the File, Import MIDI File section. There it is in all its glory. Let's open it up. And what it does is Reason and previously to Reason 6, Record 1.5 has these rack units which are all individual voice synthesizers, if you like. Not human voice, but musical instrument voice. And uh, they're called an ID8, an instrument device. And it's clever enough to recognize the type of instrument that's being played in the MIDI file and then it pulls in a kind of general MIDI equivalent. If I uh, just go to the beginning of the song, back up and press play, we should hear some music. Okay, so it took a while. And there are some issues with the file. It hasn't encoded everything correctly, but with some digital audio workstations, when you first grab a MIDI file, you would have to go in and assign or allocate all the sounds yourself anyway. So I think this gives you a reasonable start, and the, probably the best thing to do is just to have a listen one track at a time. Now, what's also helpful, if you have something like Cakewalk Express, let's see if we can do a bit of jiggery-pokery here. If I squash it down a little bit in size, you can see that Cakewalk originally gives you an idea of what's on what track and what's on what channel. So here's the track down the left hand side and the channel, which I think is the MIDI channel number, is there. So for example, if you look at MIDI channel number 10, we've got electronic, that's basically ch channel 10 is always reserved for drums. So we've got electronic drums on channel 10. We've, probably, we've also got a synth drum on channel 6. So that helps in terms of looking at what actually ends up being allocated, say, on, on uh, channel 1 here. So if we look at our channel 1 on Cakewalk Express, it says lead to Sawtooth. So let me just drag that out of the way for a second. And if we look on uh, this one, if I click on um, this track here, on my channel 1, you see the synth lights up at the top. I just need to drag that down so you can see the top banner. So there's Terabyte Channel 1. Synth is a saw lead. And uh, if we compare them in Cakewalk 2, it says it's a saw tooth. So it's, it's guessed or it's allocated a pretty similar voice to that track. Now, if I uh, use the uh, forward slash key on, the, uh, on this tick, I should, with a bit of luck, be able to solo that track. See, they all went to M for mute. So if I play Terabyte in Cable Express, that's the sawtooth being played in Cable. And that's just literally playing the computer sound card. And if I now drag that out of the way, and I solo, effectively doing the same thing, although um, if I do that in Terabyte, it's not a million miles different, is it? Let's face it. 
So what we can do um, is we'll have to get into fine tuning this track and getting rid of any obvious errors. So for example, um, if we go back to, if I drag cable back again, we've got synth drum on channel six, uh, or on MIDI channel six, and that is on track seven. Now, are we going to see something similar on here on track seven? Uh, it doesn't. It's not. Doesn't make it that easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So that channel six is the synth drum, uh, which we had over here. There we go. Same thing. Same deal. Starts right at the beginning of the track. Uh, let's actually let's let's listen to the synth drum. If we go back to the beginning, and I did my forward slash in the area of track six again. If I click on there then basically what I've done is I'm soloing the synth drum. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So it's a weird old electronic bass drum. And uh, I think you'll find from my previous attempt at doing this recording, it actually called it a piano. So on this particular occasion, Reason wasn't clever enough to work out what this was supposed to be. But this is not a tragedy now. Let's just pull that down. I don't want you to get confused by that um, track title that was underneath. We're looking at MIDI file track eight, channel six, and it's calling it quite wrongly grand piano. Now we can change what's on the ID8 quite easily. We can do it a couple of ways. We can use these arrows where it says select next category, um, although it's in the way, so you can't really see what I'm doing. But if I click on the arrows, it's actually changing the voices. Let's do it that way. So you can see it a bit easier. I can go up, back, and I can cycle through a bunch of different things. There's another way of doing it. If I go back to piano again for a second, you can right click on where it says piano and see you've got a whole bunch of these things to choose from. So all of these things down here are ID8s. And uh, I'm just going to select it from here. Actually, it's just easier, isn't it? Uh, but you can do it either way. Now, I'm also going to select electronic because I think that's going to give us the best approximation of what that drum should sound like. So, uh, it's still soloed. No, it's not. Let's unsolo that. Let's go down to track or channel six, beg your pardon. I take it back to the beginning, which actually took me ages to figure out that you can just click the little L down here and it takes the uh, starter point of the sequencer right back to the beginning again. You can do it by clicking stop a couple of times, but anyway, whatever floats your boat. And we'll press play. So there we have our synth drum, and let's compare it to what we had on the other one. Hmm. Okay, now, in a perfect world, I don't want this to run over 10 minutes. In a perfect world, I would use Le Reasons live sampling and I would just uh, press play. We hear that noise coming out of the speakers and I would open up something like a redrum and I would capture this sample. And the way you do it, let's just show you real quick. Um, in a perfect world, we do it like this. So we'd open up a, a, a redrum under instruments, here it is. We'd reset the device, it used to be called initialize, we'd reset it, and we'd hit the sample button there. Now it's asking us to play the sample, so we go to Cable Express, we press play, and in a perfect world, it would have captured that sample and put it in there. Unfortunately, it didn't. So we've got to figure out another way. If we want to use that exact sound, we've got to figure out another way of capturing it. And one way might be to route the, the speaker output back into the front of an audio interface. I've still got to figure that bit out. We, I've done other videos where I've used Total Recorder to capture that sound, and that might be an option. Um, anyway, we're at the 10 minute mark, we've just exceeded it. So that's a bit of an introduction to how to import a MIDI file. Um, obviously, if you want to do it and keep it as close to the original MIDI file as possible, you're probably not going to get a door that's going to do that with 100% accuracy. You'll get a few that 
give you a starting point and then you have to go in and make the tweaks yourself. Anyway, that's it from me for this video. This is Neil Paddock from How to Program Drums. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.